Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Global Healing Circle again. Today, we have something very special for you because we are actually talking about how we can predict the future. And in the end of this session, you are going to get four different uh, readings for um, the, the next year, starting from today, which is the day of the recording. It is the solstice, the winter solstice, and uh, the readings are going to last for one year until the next solstice. So stay tuned and let's start. Just uh, let's introduce ourselves first. Uh, Fotin, you want to start? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Fotin Nikale. I'm from Greece. I'm a shamanic practitioner in Epaco. That means that I'm using the tradition of Peru uh, to my healings and to the reading that I'm going to do. I think it's a stone reading. And I've been practicing for about seven years. And you can find me on my website, potinicale.gr, and check out the services. Nice. And Christina? Hi, I'm Christina CC, and I am a holistic well being coach. And I help women just create the life of their dreams through their mind, body, and soul. Beautiful. And Amos. Hi, everyone. My name is Amos Campbell. I'm a master healer from Peoria, Arizona, and I run Health and Healing Solutions, a full spectrum healing practice. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Beautiful. And my name is Nora. I am from Finland, from the probably coldest and darkest place in the world at the moment, I guess. And um, yeah, looking forward to this uh, session. Um, how about different uh, types or ways of uh, predicting the future. Uh, what, what do you have in mind? Like what kind of ways have people used in the past? I think the oldest that I can think of is the tea leaves. Um, some mm -hmm. of the first uh, shamans um, of Siberia, um, the legend is, is that they taught the yellow emperor's sorcery techniques, including reading of the tea leaves to predict events in the future. And that was a very important method to them. Um, it's a very unique method when you try at home because no two readings will ever be alike. I've done tea leaf readings for the last five years professionally, and they've they're never even remotely close. That's the cool part. And can you can you tell like how do you do the tea leaf, tea leaf reading? Um, like, I do. What ha actually happens? Yeah. Well, like as they're drinking the cup, the water is like touching you, and it is it's conducting your body's electrical energy. So you are tuning this water the whole time, and the tea leaves settle to the bottom. I do use a special cup that has lots of images and has a, a level to it. So you start with water at a certain level and then you drink down to a certain level. So there's enough water to let the leaves slide, but not enough to let them hit the bottom of the saucer. And, mm. and therein is the, is the finesse of the turning point. And then it's all about symbology. And then we use a timer from the top of the rim is coming up like in the next month. And then as you go down to the bottom of the cup, this is usually done over, it's a reading over a three month period. And then there are symbols that the, the clumps or the symbols lay on, and that has an influence of the symbol that is that has formed. So mm. it's really about symbology. The more you understand symbology, the better these types of readings will be because they are 100% free form. Nice, very, you, very, you, very you interesting. Mm -hmm. use cards yeah. you'll get repeated cards eventually tea leaves nothing will ever repeat yeah great any other forms that you happen to have in mind how have people predicted the future in the past well i think um a pendulum i i use a pendulum now and again as well so especially you know our brains really want to, when we're looking at the science of it, neuro science of it, our brains want to be secure. They want a, it wants a specific path or pattern. So it's always trying to either go back to the past to, to predict the future. Yeah. So sometimes we get caught up in a loop and you just can't, you can't 
really reach your guides um, or your higher sense of yourself, higher, higher voice, higher knowledge. And so I've used a pendulum. Well, yeah, you can, you can use a necklace or you can yeah. use I'm even a hair and a ring, actually. Yes. In Finland, that's the traditional way. Yes. Take yes. your own hair and a ring. Yes. Yes. Well, now I wish I had hair, damn it. <laughs> so um, a pendulum is typically just a crystal or you could use a ring. As Nora, you were, you were talking about in Finland, um, how they use a ring in hair and um, just a string and some sort of weight, um, something that means something to you. Um, even a paper clip can work. So mm -hmm. what this actually does is just taps into your energy and um, you ask it yes or no questions. And something you can test it with to see if it's in alignment with you is you can just ask it a known question. Like, my name is, is my name Christina? And it will start to move. Is my name Christina? Is my name Christina? So the yes answer is moving back and forth. Is my name George? 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 So you can see it's moving in a, it's moving in a clockwise rotation, signifying no. So then you can ask whatever question, and this is going directly to your inner knowledge, bypassing all of the ego, bypassing all of the um, questions and monkey mind. Hmm. And the conscious mind going right directly to the subconscious or, and to your guides, your higher self. So this is a great tool um, and I use it a lot. <laughs> yeah. And of course, in this moment, maybe it's good to say like, uh, we use also real pendulums, but in the past we used a hair and a ring. So uh, that's uh, something we, we, it comes from, from the past. Um, and uh, one thing about pendulums and I think about anything when you try to predict is that you cannot be nosy and ask about other people's stuff, right? So without permission, don't ever do that. <laughs> Just a reminder to keep us on the good side. Yeah, so how well, about I, I kind of have a um, something about that. So yeah. I feel, I believe that if it's out of love, if you are truly coming from your heart and it's out of love, then there's no way that there can be a negative um, pushback on that or a negative rebound on that. Because anything yeah. out of love is only creating love. So you have no access to anything negative. Yeah, well, that's, that's definitely true. And of course, if my friends ask, ask me to check something for them, I do, because that's when they need it, then I, I go and check for other people. But mainly I try to keep out of uh, like other people's personal stuff, just out of being polite and kind of playing with the universal laws. So how about Kotini? Do you have uh, anything you want to share about how to predict? Yeah, in, um, I have three things in mind. One is uh, Pythia in ancient Greece, when people wanted to start off a new project and they wanted to see how it would go on, they would usually go to Delphi, which is uh, like the oracle place. Uh, Apollo was the god of the oracle. So Pythia was sitting in a tripod and there were laurel leaves burning and she would smell them and come into a trance state. And then she would ask God, you know, this person came and they're asking about this. Um, the problem with the message is that it could have two meanings. So depending on how the person would um, translate them, you could be, you know, somebody could be doing good or bad. So it's not exactly like only Gantt, we also have to, you know, give a hand into this whole thing. Uh, I, in Peru, when I was there, I got a coca leaf reading, which is like a continuous re uh, So there was a question from the beginning and so uh, the, the shaman was throwing it over and over again until we had a specific answer about it. You know, there was something wrong, something was not going, okay, there was something that was okay, needed to be fixed, then it would throw it again and again and again and again. Uh, I think that he wasn't touching anything, he was just reading the coca leaf. Um, so that was very interesting and it was taking a long time to do it. And the third one that's kind of similar to what Amos said is the coffee reading. So you would go and have great coffee 
So if uh, the person who wanted to have the reading would go and make the coffee and he would, you know, ask the questions to go into the coffee or ask to be shown whatever needed to be shown. And then he would drink the coffee, <laughs> like you said, it was. And then it would have to reach a point where there would be coffee sediments on the, uh, on the bottom and then flip over. And after it dried, uh, the person starts reading the cup. You would read from left to right, starting now and going for as long as the cup would say. Um, I would say they're all very, very interesting. I haven't tried tea <laughs> yet. Uh, these are the ones I know so far. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, in Finland, uh, well, I have told this in maybe in other panels that uh, we have had very strong ancestral um, kind of nature connection and, and kind of even very shamanistic way of living here. It's not anymore. We are completely a modern country nowadays, unfortunately, but uh, we still have some traditions. And um, one very typical um, that we have actually on both of the solstices, which is interesting, um, is that um, we think that this time, uh, starting from uh, Christmas or like 21st until uh, uh, the 6th or somewhere there, that it's the time um, to connect with your angels. And uh, uh, then also in the summer uh, around the uh, solstice, um, we have kind of different things that you collect seven different flowers and you put them under your pillow. And when you, when you sleep, you will dream about your future husband. And we have like all this kind of like connected with the nature things during the summer. And uh, you can um, see the reflection of your, uh, of your future spouse on the lake or, or this kind of stuff that usually the nature is very well in, involved. And um, yeah, and during the winter, we have uh, the so-called holy nights and they start uh, from 24th. Uh, so the first night is 24th to 25th of December. And from that on, uh, in total, 12 nights. And they represent uh, one month of the, of the becoming year. So the first month is January, the second one, February and so on. And uh, it is recommended to write down your dreams because you might uh, get some insight about the future. And I have done this on many years, actually, and it is quite interesting to read them later because there has definitely been something. Like, my dreams can be quite wild, but maybe some themes were similar than during those, uh, during those uh, months. So that is maybe something you can try if this comes out early enough. I don't know. Maybe we are not done with edit editing until 24. But let's see. Any other things you want to share before we go to the readings? Um, like just to play off of it, because everybody tends to be watching it right now. It was uh, in Wednesday on Netflix. They talked about obsidian being used by Aztec priests to incur visions. Black volcanic glass obsidian. Um, it's very interesting when we get into the divination portion because it was Queen Elizabeth the first had a sorcerer on retainer. His name was John D, and um, he had an obsidian mirror that had been imported from Mexico that he mm. used, and his. Predictions are some of the most accurate on record. I mean, he was on royal retainer. So I find that very interesting. And he used black obsidian. So for all the viewers out there, and it's very easy to get your hands on and it's very cost effective. It's one of the more cheaper stones. Nice. Yeah, how about you? Do you feel that are there any special stones that work very well with the readings, for example? Any stone will work. Um, when it comes to things like that, I recommend clear crystal quartz just to give you clarity because it tends to amplify whatever energy you're exposing it to and it's good if it's clarity right black obsidian is great but i don't recommend it for everyday people you have to be able to have the psyche to withstand staring into the darkness because the darkness does stare back mm. so right. that's why i don't i recommend clear crystal cords for beginners and newbies and, and how do you do amos uh, your your stone readings what happens exactly in those I just light some incense. I have a sacred space and it is opening yourself up. These t the, the stone acts as like a grounding tool. It holds part of my essence here and in true remote viewer fashion because I was never able to master astral projection, a piece of your psyche journeys into the darkness where all the answers are hidden. Hmm. But you're in complete darkness and eventually an eye comes to you and you stare into the eye and for me that's what it that's what happens. And you get a vision, usually very small, loaded with very powerful imagery, and usually in some form of sequence. So I bring that information back, I record it, and over the years I've just I've developed a deciphering method. And then we see, for me, it's a type of forecast. It's like 
trying to, you, we try to predict the weather the best we can. Like it, it's like a 90% chance that this will happen. So just yeah. take an umbrella just in case, you know, that 10% mm -hmm. may be the 10% that kicks in that day and you didn't need your umbrella, but at least I had it just in case. Not going to yeah. hurt. At least that's my method. Yeah, interesting. And actually, have you heard, I, I was uh, talking with some people um, about the fortune tellers and um, they, they, they told me that um, it was easier for fortune tellers to predict the future of a person before but now because of uh, the rabbit um, awakening and the, the people's awareness rising they start to direct their lives uh, more from inside so uh, it's more difficult uh, for a fortune teller anymore to be accurate have you heard about this is this true well that's it's an interesting subject and not in that direct line i'm going to equate it to more people are believing in themselves and tapping into what I call their magic. So when you've got mm. more magicians walking around exercising their magic, because most people didn't know that they had this internal power of choice and manifestation or what have you, and now everybody's on this pull. So now it, it changes the circumstance and it changes everybody's potential. Right, true. Yeah, so basically that's what they said, but on other words, I would yeah, say. Yeah, exactly, so yeah. yes. Yeah, exactly. And actually, we are going to have a, an episode about manifesting, I think, in two weeks, uh, we are recording it. So it's going to be out in the January. So a way of starting your year 23 by creating the future that you really love, right? Cool. So let's go to the, unless anyone wants to say something, let's go to the predictions, no? I would just like to say before we kind of get into that. Um, yeah. So any of these readings, even though it is for the year, it's only a marker of where your energy is at the moment. And because we're all connected, we all kind of receive these messages as we're supposed to. Um, but we have the ability to change our energy within yes. this time. It is not fixed. And it's just, it's just a marker of where we're at. That's all. Exactly. A good clar clarification. So who wants to start? So. So how about, Christina, you start because uh, you have cards there. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So I'm just going to pull the first card. And they are going, these cards are going to be for a, a general, general reading for people um, from solstice to solstice next year. So one year from 21st of uh, December until the next year, 21st of December. So this first card is called the Bone Collector. And this is from the Enchanted Map cards from Colette Baron reed um, I really like her cards a lot. So this is um, interesting as we're kind of going into the new year. Um, yeah. So the Bone Collector is all about um, carrying things from the past. So you're collecting bones along the way, past experiences and reliving your future from those experiences. So it's time to release those old ways of being, those old bones and move forward into the new year. And perhaps the one is a significant number to you as it could be the first of the year, the first month, or some other meaning. So I'm gonna draw, I see this as the first half of the year and then the second half of the year. Is magic prayer. Hmm. So I haven't seen, I haven't pulled this card before, but it looks beautiful. This is card 32. So maybe that means something to you. Um, I'm going to read from the book on this one. Speak your prayers, listen for the answers, and act in faith. So when you see the magic prayer of prayer card, it is a reminder that your prayers will be answered. Spirit always waiting to help you and to heal you when you're in the need. That said, the best prayer is thy will be done through me thy will and not mine be done. Mm -hmm. Conscious contact with your higher power is achieved through the ritual of prayer and meditation. Speak and listen to the divine force within 
the field of creation and surrender. Surrender to your dreams and to your wishes. Nice. So the second half of the year is all about praying and listening to your higher self. Beautiful. So that was your reading. That was my reading. So, so something to look for. And yeah. how about uh, Amos, you want to go next? Yes, um, I pulled The Magician. Ooh, nice. So I really do feel that 2022, uh, 22 being the ascended master number, everyone knows 11 being the master number, but 22 is the ascended master number. And now we're stepping into 23. And I feel like for anyone who ever watched the Jim Carrey movie, 23, not his best work, but it's the weirdness of 23, how everything adds up to 23. Uh, I feel like all the struggles that everyone has been going through has been leading up to this. This is the summation of everything. And this is going to be everyone tapping into their magic. This is essentially my vision is everyone is going to be stepping away from these old belief systems. And they're going to be putting that energy back into themselves because people are going to be believing in themselves. And it's, because we're now starting to believe more in each other of what we can do. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the message is lean into your magic, trust your magic and develop your magic because it's your, it's your greatest gift. And also I pulled a message from the animals is the armadillo. So it's mm. to know your weaknesses, to know where your soft spots are, and to know how to defend yourself and when to defend yourself and also know when to, it's okay to just roll on almost like the tumbleweed. Just, you don't have to always engage with everything. You can just roll away. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So be, being very magical and being able to leave the situations when they are not suitable for you. So choosing the energy that you merge with, right? Yes. Yeah. How about Fotini? Now we go to the stones. Do you want to explain a little bit what you do there? Yes, I'm going to explain. Um, well, the, the Keros, they have a, speci a special cloth for this. So I'm going to show it a little bit. It, it looks like the floor, but it's not exactly the floor. <laughs> so it's this one that has four, four things. Okay, so this signifies something, the line, is the middle word, this line, the horizontal. The vertical is the past and the future. So my throwing here looks like, as I asked the same thing that you said, that everything is like concentrated here, in the here and now. It's like we are, we're kind into ourselves. We're not really, you know, open. There is some heaviness going down, which is, that means that these are the things that are keeping us back. It's kind of the, in the underworld. The underworld for them is the inner world. Uh, there are some things that are, go, they're not very high. They're still close to the middle world. And this is very interesting. And also there's not many things here in the future, but there are not also things here in the past. So we seem to be waning, weighing down into this whole uh, process. So the stone reading is done in three in three throws. For the first is how the situation is here and now. And the second is what can I change? What can the healer or what can the oracle do to change a little bit, change just one thing so the course of action goes in a different way? So I'm going to be asking again, what is the message for the new year for the next six months? So I would say we were kind of waiting. It, it kind of feels like the bond collector. It's like, what do I have that is keeping me down? It has the same, the same thing, the same feeling. So I'm going to do the next drawing. Um, now the queens seem to be going scattered around. They're not all in one place. 
there are some things that are going in the past, something is really leaving, it's going in that way. There is something that is going in the upper world, and it's quite clear here. But well, we still have a little bit of difficulties, you know, things being a little bit stuck, keeping us, you know, very, very grounded and maybe not letting us give, have wings so we can fly into the future. So things are kind of spreading, but they're not really, you know, like, okay, yeah, the road is open, let's go on. But there is a shift. The energy is lighter now in this whole area. Uh, things are coming together. Uh, things are shaping up, they're taking shape, I could say. They are taking shape, they haven't reached their final uh, shape, but they are moving like this, like an arrow moving forwards and upwards. So I would say this has a very, very lighter um, feeling, lighter, um, a lighter essence than the first one that we did. And I'm going to do it a third time in this way. So things are moving, they are moving and they're kind of shaping. They, they're going into a kind of row was moving ahead and moving forward. Um, one is like stepping stones also, as you can go from one to the other. So maybe going step by step by step in order to really move forward and move upward. Um, also, there seems to be a dynamic here that is going up, even though it seems to be in three, um, in three times, in three periods. There are many, many more because now we have just a little bit of time. I'm just going to say that it feels like the, the ha next half of the year is going to shape and it's going to be more, more open, open and open and more open as the time passes. So this is my reading. Nice. Very interesting. Haven't seen that kind of predicting before. Beautiful. Okay, so then um, I am going to, I am not a professional card reader, so don't try to book a reading with me. I do this only for myself and the, the people that ask me, uh, my friends or so. Um, so I'm just going to give the disclaimer that I don't predict the future from the cards. But this uh, is one of my favorite decks. Uh, it's from Dorian Virtue, it's the, the angel angel tarot cards and um, I um, I kind of wanted to have two cards but uh, I got three cards and uh, two of them came together so sometimes they seem to kind of want to combine their forces so we can see two sides of them and um, two of them that came together um, uh, I'm gonna go them through but they are both uh, like the, let's say the, uh, what are those? Uh, the, uh, the minor arcanas or the, the more important ones. What are they called in English? Archangel? Major arcanas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, major like they are, they are the, with the archangels, but I'm just thinking how it would be in a normal tarot deck, like the tower and the, the mm -hmm. emperor and th major those, what, what arcana, it, arcana. Ma majors, yeah, major. majors. So, so I think these are kind of the majors in this deck. So the first one is the emperor. Now, now I start again because I fucked it up. So, so the first one is uh, the emperor. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe it doesn't show it, but anyway, uh, it has uh, Arch Archangel Michael, and uh, it is organization and logic, structure and discipline and leadership. And uh, with, with the Emperor card came another uh, Archangel, uh, Zatkiel. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. And this says uh, the need for balance and moderation cooperation and compromise, wait for perfect timing. 
So basically, uh, it's about organizational and logic and structure and discipline, but kind of giving the universe the time to work behind the scenes so you can have your balance and you can wait for the timing. At least that's what I get. And um, I think this might be a, a personal message for me uh, also, but I think that the cooperation definitely resonates uh, with me personally. I think a year uh, 2023 is in my life going to be all about cooperating. We started this healing circle this year. This is going to go on. We're going to expand. We're going to have even more more people coming into our circle. Uh, also in my other job, I'm, I'm more and more like networking my way uh, to meet great people and learning a lot. So cooperation is, is in big, uh, big uh, focus in my life at the moment. And I have usually been the lonely wolf. So this is something completely new for me. And then a, a kind of a second card, because those two came together, um, there is a, a, a card um, from the earth, earth element, uh, and uh, it's the night of earth. Earth is usually uh, something very tangible. It's something very calming, soothing, usually uh, about abundance and about uh, like materialistic wealth and health. Uh, so it's a very nice, uh, nice uh, uh, thing to have for 2023. We all, all also want prosperity, right? And this card says um, uh, that the Knight of Earth is loyal, dedicated, honorable, and kind. And um, time to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments. Uh, and also there is a guardian angel for the person who gets this card. So um, maybe as a life coach, I see, see here that um, if you want to start a new habit in the beginning of the year, you should have started it already. Like we, we tend to procrastinate. We tend to say like, no, from the 1st of January, I'm going to start to go to the gym. No, you start now and you keep on going there because otherwise, your paradigm is gonna shoot you in the ankle and you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to to do that transform transformation so trust yourself you can do whatever you really want there uh, are archangels and your guardian angel there for you and uh, there is uh, wealth and prosperity and health and uh, support and also perfect timings so that's my message for this year. Good. Anything you want to share before? Uh, no, we, of course, we will have the last uh, wisdom words round, right? So anything uh, for, the, for the year of 2023 and for the, the last days of this year? I, I want to share something that I noticed in all of your cards. The first one was number one. Of my that? cards. Or of all three of you. Ah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, it yeah, was first number one. one. Yeah, yeah. Was number one. Really? Thing. Oh, that's great. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's a number one again, and then again a number one. I think yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, and the last ones were 4, 14. So that's also interesting. 4 and 14. Oh. Hmm. You had 14 stones, which I thought was cool. Yeah, interesting. 14 stones. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Very interesting. Whatever we want to make out of it, right? <laughs> so, how about what did you start? Uh, you are we, uh, words of wisdom for, for our viewers about the transition of this year. Mm, I was thinking about the stepping stones and the balance that you had in your card. I think it's very important starting the new year to take it in a, you know, kind of step by step. It's like do one time in the gym and then one more and then one more and one more rather than being overwhelmed. Oh, I have to do all, you know, all these things and it seems so. So kind of break it into little pieces so we can make it easier for us. Like go whenever we're asking for something, ask it in what with wisdom. 
So we're not asking like, you know, huge amount of money that we don't know what to do or how we can handle, but we can start with the little things and then grow, grow, grow from there. Hmm. Yeah, I think going along with that is um, letting go of the past so that you can move forward. So um, it's letting go of those things that no longer serve you, letting go of past experiences that no longer serve you, and just look at them as experiences in the past. And this will allow you to release and start those stepping stones toward a new future mm -hmm. without carrying that past into the future. Beautiful. How about Amos? I think um, to go from survival to success, I think we need to focus on cooperation instead of competition. Um, my idea is what I called umbrella theory. If we can all put one umbrella up over top of us, it'll cover us, but it'll cover half of each person on each side. And if everybody could do that, it would create a phalanx and it would be an impenetrable dragon scale. Nothing could get through it. So our first magic was cooperation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with all of you. And I would also encourage you to uh, get a healer or a mentor because uh, doing that journey alone and letting things go alone uh, is very difficult and uh, I have noticed on my path that the most rapid growth happened always when I was uh, having a tutor mm -hmm. or I was having someone to help me so go to places uh, and to people who are more no knowledgeable than you who have the kind of aura that uh, transmits a lot of wisdom and energy because that gives you a possibility of growth. It doesn't mean that go and find a guru, but it, it means that spend your time with people who actually already have done something that you want to do in your life, have done the healing or have, uh, have understood something that you need to understand about life and be open of receiving um, help, I think. That's what's missing from the combo. Yeah. And I, I would so, just like to add something to that too, is that a healer or a coach or a any sort of mentor, they're going to show your show you your blind spots. Exactly. And you can't change something that you aren't aware of. So it's bringing things into awareness that you wouldn't normally see. And exactly. that is really the importance of getting help. So if you're finding Water. yourself not shifting or repeating the same patterns, then there must be something that's not being shown to you or, or you're aware of. And someone can help actually help you point that out. Exactly. So with these words of wisdom, we wish you Merry Christmas and a most happy, abundant, and successful year 2023, whatever success means to you. And uh, looking forward to see you again next year. Much love. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <clears throat> happy New Year. <laughs>